<laughs> Do we have to put somebody on the budget committee? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He gets he does, he does. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, September monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. May I ask everybody to stand and uh, pledge allegiance? Mm -hmm. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I ask everybody just to stand for one more minute in a moment of silence. Um, most of you know, if not all, um, Bill Watson, who has been a member of this commission for many, many years, um, has been dealing with a wife that has had cancer uh, for 11 years. And unfortunately, she has passed this uh, last Sunday. So I'd just like to uh, take a minute, a uh, moment of silence um, in respect Thank you. Staying with that for a minute, I'm just going to make a note indicating that uh, Mrs. Watson, there will be a celebration of life services to be held on Saturday, October 8th at 11 o'clock at the Congregational, South Congregational Church in Concord. Uh, I plan um, to drive up, so if anybody would be interested in driving up with me, I'd be more than happy to, to couple. <clears throat> so that will be October 8th, 11 o'clock in Concord. Okay, introduction of commissioners. First of all, to my right, representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Bob Ladd. Fran McMahon next to him, representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. John Nine representing the town of Hampton. We have Ann Marshawn, our secretary. Chuck Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Bob Preston representing the Hampton uh, Greater Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Mike Hausman representing State Parks Dread. And Jason Bashan, who is kind of like our honorary commissioner, who uh, represents the town planning uh, department. Excused tonight, of course, is Mr. Watson and Mr. Merrill. Um, Mr. Griffin might be coming in a little later, uh, so we will continue the uh, the meeting. Uh, public comment. Do we have anybody from the audience to wishing to speak to any of the related items of the agenda tonight? And if you could just introduce yourself for the record. Ed McDonald, uh, 25 Epping Ave, Hampton. Summer resident. <laughs> uh, the reason I'm here tonight was uh, John and I had uh, gone back and forth on a couple of emails, and I was trying to figure out when the final alternatives were going to be selected for this, uh, the, the, the transportation project. Uh, and it, it seems like that there's no certain date for that yet. Uh, but I had uh, submitted back in October of uh, 2015 uh, some information, uh, suggestions that I had that uh, I'm not sure what happened if they had been reviewed, looked at, or whatever. But one of the alternatives I know that I suggested I haven't seen discussed at all, and that was to eliminate the U-turn uh, at Dustin and Dover by opening up. Uh, if you instead of instead of taking a left onto Ocean Boulevard from Ashworth, follow the road, Harbor Road down to in front of just past Gorin's or the entrance to the state park, make a cut through that would line up with the entrance to the state park. So the people that wanted to go to the state park would follow that road down to the right, stay off of Ocean Boulevard, queue up on that road, and take a left into the state park, or they could make a U-turn to come back onto Ocean Boulevard. That would eliminate that all that confusion there at the corner of uh, Dover, Dustin, Ashworth, Ocean Boulevard. I don't know if that was, uh, if that's been discussed, looked at. The other uh, issue I had with, with some of the uh, traffic data that's being provided here doesn't seem to be, um, uh, doesn't seem to hold together when you start looking at it. Plus it eliminates uh, a few uh, places where there's this congestion 
that hasn't been even talked about, and that one of them is the uh, the entrance to the state park uh, from Ocean Boulevard. There's there's no traffic data on that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened to that. Uh, o Street is completely missing from the traffic data. Uh, traffic counts um, and there was at one point I think Ocean uh, O Street was a um, one way going towards Ashworth Avenue which allowed people to come down uh, from from the north along Ashworth Avenue take a left onto Ocean uh, onto O Street to take a left on Ocean and then they could go into the Haverhill Street parking lot um, that that doesn't uh, that isn't allowed now because o, o Street I think during the summer goes is one of the five last streets down there that uh, are one way going down. Uh, but the other thing is uh, it, considering making Ashworth Avenue uh, two way is uh, in my opinion ludicrous. I don't know who came up with that idea. I know it was in the original one, uh, but. To have, if you if you count the conflicts that you have coming across from Ocean Boulevard onto Ashworth from South, there's I think about uh, what are there 14 streets. I don't know how many motels. You get about you introduce at least 40 new conflicts on Ashworth Avenue. So you'd have people coming north on Ashworth Avenue getting into that center turning lane while people are in the center turning lane trying to get onto the leaded streets, these people are going to be getting into the center lane trying to get into the parking lots, the motels, and the streets on the west side of Ashworth, which that it's like, I think it was uh, your brother, Bob Charlie, he said it's like it would be introducing the bumper cars from uh, Salisbury again going down Ashworth Avenue, but that that just doesn't make any sense, and, and to reduce any roadway by 50 percent to increase volume is I don't know where that new math comes from but that didn't that wasn't the way we were taught when I was in school so if you're gonna if you're gonna have Ashworth Avenue just one lane southbound and then have two lanes uh, northbound one on Ocean Boulevard and one on Ashworth Avenue it's that uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me eliminating the parking from Haverhill up to the uh, the uh, playground makes a whole lot of sense, uh, and I know that the uh, the revenue that the uh, state is concerned about, uh, it, but you know safety is more important than revenue in some cases. Does the uh, state pay for treatment of uh, sewer sewerage for their facilities along the beach? Do they pay? I don't know. Or is that no, a fee? Yeah. We do pay. Yep. Do you pay, you, pay the town. Yes. There is a, a payment for for mm -hmm. sewage. What about uh, uh, trash? Uh, I don't. We haul trash out of there, and, and we do pay for it. What we take over to the uh, the town. So yep. so the state is reimbursing the town for both sewer and and uh, trash. I was I wasn't aware of that. I was going to say that would be a good uh, swap off if, uh, <laughs> if the state wasn't paying for that. Maybe they could. Uh, Maybe the town could give them that, and yeah. they could uh, eliminate that. But uh, I, I, I'm curious to know kind of what the schedule is, and I think there's something on the agenda to talk about that. So, and Ed, just so you know, that your uh, email to me with your notes are uh, dated 10, 13, 15. Yes, um, I have. Oh. I have a note saying that it has been forwarded to everybody. Okay. Um, and what I will do is I will re remind both DOT and um, BHB right. to look at your notes again and comment on some of your suggestions. Right. The, the major one is that one on uh, instead of having people queue up on Ocean Boulevard to go into the state park to get them off onto that side road mm -hmm. uh, and come across, I think would make a whole lot of sense. Okay. Just like uh, the rotary up at uh, that was suggested by Bob. Uh, did did uh, VHB use traffic engineers on this? Or did yes. they do? Yes, they did. Now I, I'll. I'll I, I, I it would be interesting saying, to have them come to one meeting to explain some of the, because, like I say, the uh, if you look at some of the uh, the, the data.
the traffic data, the tr turns and everything, there's, there's, it, it just doesn't hold together. Yeah, yeah there is, um, and I'll get you a copy. There was a whole traffic uh, operational analysis summary done. But I think I got that uh, from you, John, once before. In fact, I have uh, copies of it uh, here. Yeah. It was like they they had um, these schematics. Yeah, yeah. No, and uh, there was, I think there was six pages altogether uh, for A, B, uh, no build. Uh, and it just, uh, I mean, some of the, the no build and keeping Ocean Boulevard two lanes, it, it seems like the traffic should be essentially the same, but the it doesn't it doesn't trap and and I believe there's a couple of uh, spots where they have traffic coming out of uh, the the uh, the parking lot north of Havel Street, like in the middle, and there's only one entrance and one exit. The entrance is at Havel Street. The exit is up at uh, the uh, H, H, uh, H Street. H. H. Right, right by the uh, the uh, okay. playground, but they, it looks like they there's they, they're showing traffic coming out between those two. I don't know where that would have gone. But. All right, um, but it would be interesting to have the traffic engineers that put this stuff together and and uh, come to one of the meetings and, and and you know field some questions on on the data that they presented because, like I say, they <laughs> they. They did give Charlie his E Street <laughs> on their plans, uh, and they left out, uh, I mean, they've left off Epping, they've left off uh, the state entrance, uh, the entrance of the state park, um, and O Street, so okay. I, I don't know where the, it seems like, uh, I don't know whether there's, we're, we're working towards something, somebody's idea of what they want, and we're putting data you know, it's almost like a... Uh, I wouldn't go that far, Ed, but okay. I, 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 I'll I look into this because um, there was a gentleman named Nicholas Sanders who was a senior traffic engineer who did the uh, who did this report. So I might be able to get and, him to come to a meeting. And he was the one that was suggesting that uh, they eliminate the lanes? He himself uh, was not, but I think it was the decision of the staff at VHB. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hear his take on eliminating those... Okay. Thank you. Subtraction, I don't think it has the capacity at all. Thank you. Yep. Any other public comments? Hearing none. We don't all, do not have any appointments tonight, so we'll uh, review and approve the uh, the minutes of the first of all the May meeting, May nineteenth. All of you received a copy of the minutes, draft minutes, page one. Page two, page three, page four, and page five. Hearing no changes or edits, uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes uh, of May 19th. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Command, second by Mr. Preston. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Now we'll move on to the uh, special meeting that we had on June 16th uh, regarding the transportation grant. We also received a copy of the minutes of that meeting. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four, page five, and page six. Hearing no edits or changes, I'll entertain a, a motion to accept the uh, the minutes, the special meeting on June sixteenth. Mr. Rage made the motion. Styles made second. Um, all in favor, with the exception of Mr. Rage and Mr. Preston, because you were excused from that meeting. So I believe uh, protocol says Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Rage can't make the motion. Okay. So I'll need um, somebody else to make a motion. Mr. <laughs> McMahon made the motion, and 
Mr. Osmond second. Any further discussion? All in favor? And to uh, abstain, Mr. Preston, Mr. Rage. I would also ask, uh, Secretary, uh, since there were a number of key individuals at that meeting, now that these minutes have been finalized, if you could um, get those minutes out to those individuals, because sure. I think it would be important for them to see what they said mm -hmm. uh, at this meeting. Okay. Chairman's report. A lot of little things about the transportation grant, um, but I think a lot of important little things. First of all, um, if you recall in June, one of the to-dos that we all had as commissioners was to try to set up some meetings during the summer months uh, to meet with our particular organizations to discuss um, where we are with the grant and, and most importantly, um, the what I would call the four areas that have become now kind of the topic. Um, the four areas being the Ashworth Ave area, Ocean Boulevard South, Ocean Boulevard North, and then the Great Boar's Head to Winnicunit. Um, unfortunately, because of everybody's schedules, including myself, uh, we weren't able to accomplish that objective in the summer. Um, so uh, right after Labor Day, I notified everybody. And uh, as of right now, uh, we have scheduled meetings uh, with different organizations to uh, discuss these uh, four areas and to get, once again, their final input, uh, and in some cases, their initial input. Um, along with the commission organizations, we also included the planning uh, board, which we met last night with. And Fran being a member of the planning board, but also a member of the Beach Commission, he and I um, were at the planning board meeting last night along with Jason, and we gave them a, a, a quick update, and um, some of the members um, actually did make some recommendations. Um, it was left that any additional recommendations, comments, thoughts from the planning board be channeled through Jason, and Jason then would fit, uh, channel them through us. Mm -hmm. So that meeting went well last night. Uh, this morning at 9 o'clock, once again, Fran representing the RPC. Uh, he and I met with um, the sub... Technical Advisory Committee. <laughs> Technical Advisory Committee of Rocky and Planning Commission. Um, bright and early at 9 o'clock, and uh, they had a full agenda. We were luckily to be on it. We were the first ones on it and spent about an hour with a number of individuals from this committee. Um, a lot of the towns within Rockingham County were represented. Um, and I would say, Fran, and agree, I, I think you would agree, is that we got a lot of interesting, good comments um, that, once again, we asked um, for them to channel any of their thoughts and comments through Scott Bogle uh, from the Rockingham Planning Commission. Scott, by the way, also uh, gave us his report. He and Dave Walker from RPC uh, actually did a, a two and a half page report of comments where they addressed uh, all of the four areas. And I would say their majority of comments focused around uh, bicycle um, pathways. And um, I will um, include their comments along with everybody else's comments. Um, I will send that report out to all of you so you'll have um, also a, an opportunity to review uh, their recommendations and comments. Uh, but we asked uh, the members of the, uh, the committee if they had any additional comments uh, to get them to us before the end of October. Next up is uh, we're meeting with uh, State Parks. Mike was able to coordinate a meeting with uh, everybody at State Parks on October 4th. That meeting will be uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning in uh, in Hampton. I suspect it will be in maybe the conference room. Yeah, down at the beach. Sea yep. And uh, since they, uh, um, they're really a key player 
in three of these four areas. Uh, the, the one excluding is Ashworth, but the Ocean Boulevard, North South, and also Great Boys Head to Winnicott. Um, it's essential that we get adequate um, input from state parks with regard to some of the uh, suggestions and alternatives that have been made. Uh, so that was on October 4th. October 12th, we're meeting with the Hampton Beach Village District at their monthly meeting. Um, 10 o'clock. Also in October, and I believe it's the 27th, uh, we're meeting with the Executive Board of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so we will have done all of those meetings before next uh, Beach Commission meeting. I also will want to request a meeting to the Board of Selectmen, either on the 17th or 24th of October, to continue to keep them up to date on what's going on. My sense is, and here's where it's gonna get a little bit tricky, um, and it kind of directly to what you were commenting, Ed, earlier, Mm -hmm. And that is, if the oh, first... John, I, I oh. think my... Yeah, it is, it's popping up. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I'll fix it. Excuse us for one second, we have a technical difficulty. <laughs> you got it? I, I'll get it. Yeah. Well, I'm scared away from the, It's the wheel. <laughs> there it's, we go. It's cutting into our time. Sorry. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> Technology. Mr. Sullivan, don't be uh, making any comments and notes on, on this for the uh, newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so here's where, and, and to Ed McDonald's comments, this could be a little bit tricky. And, and the reason I say that is that, interesting enough, the first two meetings that we've had, uh, we've had some suggestions and some comments about, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And some, I think, are worth going back to VHB and say, hey, on Ocean Boulevard North, somebody has come up with a couple of other ideas. Can you incorporate those ideas in the existing plan or give us your opinion on why it wouldn't be good. And I'll give you a classic example. In the Ocean Boulevard North, there is no bike path going from the stage all the way up to Boarset, Great Boarset. And um, we have one in the South, Ocean Boulevard South. We have one up in uh, Great Boarset to Winnicunit, but there's no identification of any type of bicycle path. And that should, we should look at that and say, hey, I mean, can you go back and, and with the width of the roads and everything and, and the parking that has been suggested to be on the east side of the road, is there room if we reduce the roadway itself or we do something, can we put a bike path in there? Um, so those types of things I think we're starting to see Somebody else mentioned that the, the width of the roads that were being proposed up in um, um, the northern part uh, is 12 feet wide for each uh, roadway, uh, where down in Ocean Boulevard, lower end, it's not as wide. And should we start be, should we be being considered having some type of minimum standards of sidewalks? Um, trail, uh, bike trails in terms of the, the width, the width of the roads, just a variety of different things that are coming up. Um, I have taken um, extensive notes in these first two meetings and I would suggest that we might want to be calling VHB back um, and saying, hey, um, you know, our plan was to make the final approval uh, in October, but it might be important, especially if we get some additional comments from people, uh, with some good ideas for them to take uh, a little bit more time to reevaluate and see if we can better enhance any of their four areas before we take it to a vote as a commission. 
Um, although we know that that vote um, is not to implement, but a, a vote to recommend. And also, we also know that that vote will just take us to our next step of the grant, which is the technical design, which will then give us the cost factor that will be important for us to, to look at. So that I, I want to kind of keep open before we actually tell people that we'll be making a decision at the end of October um, and see how these other meetings um, come up. Uh, there's another little tricky issue that has, has recently come up and been brought to my attention. Um, VHB is still our contractor, but Gordon Liddy has now left VHB. Mm -hmm. He is now uh, the new director of community development in his hometown. Um, I had a meeting with William Rose, which is part of my report. And in talking with William, um, he tells me that VHB is still the contractor. Uh, it, it'll be their responsibility to continue to provide services uh, on this grant. Um, he has spoken directly to Gordon and Gordon will be con continuing as a consultant for VHB, specifically on our grant. Um, and so William assures me that although he's no longer employed um, with VHB, that he will be continuing on as a consultant as it pertains to our grant. So it will be uh, important for us to kind of watch how that plays out over the next month. Um, and see uh, how they're going to transition moving into the uh, the engineering design and costing uh, segment of the uh, of the grant. The um, so that basically is is my uh, my report. Um, uh, we do uh, have under new business. Um, a uh, transportation grant in-kind report update. I'll give that at the appropriate time. Uh, but is there any questions, comments with regard to my transportation grant update? Fran, since you've been involved in the last two meetings, do you have any additional updates or comments? No, really. The only the only comment I'd make based on what you just said right at the end is that, you know, if we take 30 or 60 days longer than we originally anticipated now, it's well worth it. I mean, we're talking a 50-year project here, so uh, if we spend a, a couple extra months on the front end, I, I don't think that's material in any way. So we ought to try and do the best job we can, and if it takes a little longer, that's fine, you know. Okay. Do they have any updated plans that are anything newer than the ones we, we got way back when? No. No? Okay. No. And, and, w and one of the things that I was thinking about doing, <clears throat> depending on these additional comments that we're getting from uh, different organizations, um, is maybe even asking for a group of us to meet with uh, William and uh, VHB and to get them kind of alerted to some of the comments, including Mr. McDonald's comments and stuff like that. So giving them a little bit of time to, to comment at our meeting in October. Um, I just don't want to give them, you know, all of these new ideas and, you know, at the meeting. So I'll probably ask William to see if he can kind of coordinate a meeting, even if it's a week before our commission meeting, uh, to at least give them a heads up and here's some of the thoughts and here's the direction that we're heading. Do you agree, disagree? If you agree, is there a way you can kind of modify how this part of the, uh, Ocean Boulevard is going to look, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think it's well within our um, uh, rights as, as the uh, holder of the grant uh, to ask them to make modifications as we uh, get modifications. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, we have a treasurer's report. Michael. Yep, we have a balance $10,863.43. Okay. And we have two bills that I would like to uh, pay uh, through uh, state parks. The first one, if you recall, back in May, uh, the this commission voted to contribute $625 towards a required $2,500 cash match 
um, for the FEMA community rating system grant project. Um, and uh, it was uh, voted on that if they won the grant, that we would uh, donate that money. If we didn't, if they didn't win the grant, uh, that money would go away. Well, they won the grant. So, Jason, you want to just take a minute and explain yeah. a little bit more? Yeah, so that's the uh, community rating system program that we have the grant for. We're actually in the process of working toward the end of that now. Our work is completed October 1st as far as the grant goes. Um, so it's been a, a good effort um, working with the Rockingham Planning Commission as well on that. And uh, we've met with the village district a number of times, keeping them updating, uh, updated on our progress. Um, basically what this does is allows us to get to a point, we're not quite there yet, but we're, where we'd ultimately be able to file an application to be in the community rating system. And what that does is involves a, a credit step uh, beginning at nine where you get a 5% discount on your flood insurance premiums. A credit eight gets 10% on flood insurance premiums. And as the biggest policy holder in the state of New Hampshire at 1700 flood insurance policies, it makes good sense for us to be a part of that program. So we're working through some issues at the end, I guess you could say now, but but it's looking, uh, you know, we're making good progress. We'll have the materials in place so that when everything is in place, we'll ultimately be able to file that application. So it's definitely well worth our time and effort for sure. And, but is there a guarantee in filing the application that it'll be approved? Um, no guarantees. I mean, it's, it's, it has to be approved by FEMA and uh, there's certain things that we have to meet um, before we can file the application. There are a few outstanding items that we're working on right now. Okay. But but we'll have everything in place through this grant. We're able to do a lot of organization and get information together because you need to earn those points and you have to do certain things in the community to be able to earn those points. And we're finding what, we're, maybe we're already doing things now that allows us to earn points where we're not and things that we can do. We've been doing public information meetings. I was going to give an update at the end of this meeting on a public information meeting we have coming up that things like that gets us points. So we're tallying the points right now to see where we enter into the program um, potentially if FEMA were to approve. Um, but there are some other factors that we're, we're working on as well. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion uh, to approve a payment of $625 to the town of Hampton? Um, as our share of the FEMA Community Rating System grant project. Motion made by Mr. Preston, second by Mr. Ladd. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. We also have uh, another bill from the town of Hampton, and that's for our secretarial services. Uh, it's a small one, $244, that will bring us up to date. Um, and uh, it's for our friend over here, Ann. So uh, do I have a motion uh, to issue out a check to the town of Hampton for $244? Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Preston. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We'll get these bills right over to you. Okay. Old business. If you recall, one of the things that we were talking about um, was sitting down with the Hampton Police Department and uh, to talk about summer traffic control ideas. Um, I talked to uh, uh, Chief Sawyer, and um, because of schedules, it just didn't work out in the summer, but he's more than happy to uh, sit down and talk to us either as a, a subgroup are um, at a commission meeting to kind of throw out some ideas that he has that we could possibly help him with. I know that there is one area that um, he has um, asked for some from help, if you will, um, and that is uh, one of the things that in some of the special events that they've had down the beach, they have actually put the uh, guardrails up along Ocean Boulevard. Um, and in one area that kind of stands out more than any other area is uh, between um, B and C, I'm sorry, uh, D and C, uh, all that fast food area. Um, and he, um, he has put railings up on that and it, it has really proven to be um, 
a factor of keeping people within the railings and not out on the street. Um, we chatted about down in Nashville, Tennessee. I don't know if anybody's been to Nashville, but Nashville has barriers similar in some of their downtown areas, but they also have the barriers decorated. Um, uh, they basically, it's the same types of barriers that we have seen, but they also have covers that will cover the barrier. And down in Nashville, they use it for uh, marketing and advertising. Um, and uh, something like that to kind of make it a little bit more decorative than rather than the just the <coughs> steel railings. So I, I think it would be worth our while just to have that conversation with the chief and um, I'll see what his schedule is over the next uh, month and then we'll decide whether or not we'll put it in as a an appointment uh, at a meeting or have a sub meeting first. Is there any other old business that I've forgotten? Hearing none, new business. I talked to William, um, and we now owe him, um, and it's my to do, but we now owe him um, the in kind report uh, for the uh, second quarter and third quarter of this year. Um, I have it almost completed. Uh, I told him that um, by the first week in October, um, I will have uh, the uh, in-kind report up to date as of September 30th. Um, I do not want to wait until the October uh, commission meeting, so I'm going to be sending out an email with the report and asking for a, a electronic vote uh, on submitting in the, uh, the in-kind report. Um, we didn't have much uh, by way of in-kind services in the, uh, in the summer months, but we did with a lot of people participating in the June meeting um, I've spent a fair amount of time um, on this, and so, uh, but we'll have that uh, in-kind contribution uh, ready for you to review probably the first week in October. Um, under new business, I just want to throw out, and if anybody has any additional commission objectives that they would like to see us working on over and above what our um, Objectives are as of right now, primarily the transportation grant. Um, if you have any other objectives that you would like to see this commission uh, address or work on over the next nine months, um, I would encourage you to uh, send me an email and, and we'll put it on the agenda for discussion in October. Um, this is more of an FYI, but a kind of an interesting FYI. I was contacted by a resident who lives up in uh, Great Boar's Head, and uh, he had told me that he had gotten my name from Selectman Bean, Selectman Griffin, and Selectman Bridal uh, on an issue that they all thought that we, the Beach Commission, could help him with. And what the issue was that there, he would like to see a crosswalk uh, that goes uh, from the end of the street uh, at Great Boar's Head. Um, the one, the north one, is it um, Boar's Head? Terrace. Terrace? Uh, the north one, Dumas so. Avenue. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, a crosswalk uh, right across the street almost from Little Jack's. Mm -hmm. um, he, along with a number of residents up at Boys Head, are concerned that um, the way the traffic is coming out of Hampton Beach, making that turn, um, that um, you know somebody's going to get hit because there is no official crosswalk. Um, so I told he called and I I said, well, I'll look into it, but it's it's something that we could probably just help coordinate. But this is not a decision that could, the commission can make. Um, so I did call the uh, Traffic Bureau of DOT. Um, they are more than happy to send out an engineer uh, to look at the location and, and make a judgment on whether or not it's a, it's a worthwhile area to put in a crosswalk. Um, however, the interesting part of it is that the traffic control gentleman told me that if they uh, so elect to put a crosswalk in, it then falls into the responsibility of the town 
uh, to maintain that uh, crosswalk. And um, so um, I did uh, mention that to um, our town manager and he confirmed that yes, this has been an issue that once again the town of Hampton and DOT has had for a number of years of who's responsible for the maintenance of crosswalks. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what we can do except maybe to um, have a discussion and probably when Mr. Watson rejoins us for him to give us his opinion on if there's any leeway one way or the other where we can get around some of this um, because I think it's an important issue. I did mention, however, to the gentleman that, um, you know, the crosswalk um, today uh, might be gone tomorrow and tomorrow being defined in 2019-2020 uh, if we actually, in fact, change that whole roadway up in that area. Um, but um, he, he even indicated that he would be willing to pay uh, for the crosswalk. That's how serious he was. So I told him I would follow it up, and I will. Uh, but I think probably the best person to talk about going forward would be Mr. Watson. So when he returns, I'll bring it back up to him. Just a yeah. question. Right now, the crosswalks are painted by the state, down Ocean Boulevard, not by the town. The town paints the one. So what is maintaining a crosswalk other than painting the lines? They're not maintaining the road. I don't know, Chuck. I mean, that's it. It just kind of, you know, it's it's a different, it's a whole different issue than the, the maintenance and of, of sidewalks. Right. I mean, you're right. A crosswalk is painted lines. Right. And right now they paint the lines. They came out. There were seven guys painting lines. And and, and I think <laughs> I have a picture of it. That's, if you ever want to see it. <laughs> um, but I don't see. And then the town does theirs. They only use two guys. They paint their lines on the back strip. Well, maybe maybe the the traffic gentleman that I spoke to didn't think that we knew that they already do it down on Ocean Boulevard. I don't, I don't know. The ones at the North Beach are handicap accessible. The curbing drops down, okay. you know, it's, and, and um, they've got a, a different texture on the pavement, <coughs> you know, so that you can feel the difference. But that's where the wall has right. been reconstructed okay. on the North Beach. I'm not so sure on... But on at that main. section, I think it's open. Or they could... Is it... Not From when it kind of to High Street, they're they're like that, you know. But that's basically been reconstructed in, you know, in the last few years. Okay. Um, I'll follow up with Mr. Watson. Um, next is um, just uh, I'm printing out like I do every September, the commissioner's appointment schedule for 2016 and 2017. I'll pass those over to. Is your copy in? This one, yeah. This one. Okay. You will, you will, you will see that um, I'm here until the 18th. Mr. Watson and Mr. Hausman are ongoing. Um, Fran McMahon is up this year, so um, assuming Fran that you still want to stay on the commission, what we can do is ask uh, Cliff to. Uh, Reappoint or have the Rocky and Planning Commission reappoint you for another three years um, And then the only other one that will be up for uh, Appointment this year will be uh, the citizen at large and whether or not mr. Merrill will want to continue um, That one as you know it will be a vote by this Commission uh, Whoever takes that role so um, out of courtesy, I'll ask Mr. Merrill if he's interested, and if he is, then I'll let everybody know that he is, and then we can make a decision if we want to reappoint him. Um, so that's that. Finally, the other new business that I have, and this is something that I'm going to ask Jason yep. if he wouldn't mind kind of keeping us abreast of what's going on. Um, there's going to be some Warren articles, uh, I'm sure, that will be beach-related. Uh, coming up, and I know that a lot of the uh, uh, departments, town departments, are in process now of putting warrant articles together for their particular departments. And then as we get closer to um, the end of the year, you'll have more resident warrant articles. Uh, but I think it will be important for us to kind of stay abreast of what warrant articles um, 
have an impact on the beach. Um, and um, if any of those warrant articles fall within um, our jurisdiction of reviewing the, uh, the, the master plan. Um, I know that there are some that we um, might want to just actively support. Um, I'm thinking of one particular one that there's going to be a warrant article uh, asking the town residents to vote, I believe it's a $2 million uh, warrant article to uh, do the uh, piping uh, from the beach back down into um, the uh, sewerage. Uh, we all know what problem that we had in the spring when they discovered a uh, uh, pipe broke uh, in the middle of the marshes. And so Public Works is actively going and seeking a warrant article to have a, a new one, a new uh, system put in from the beach to the uh, water sewage treatment center. I mean, that's just one, but it, there's others. So Jason, if, if you could take that on as a kind of a, sure. a town responsibility for us and Absolutely. keep us abreast of what's going on. Yeah, and we also have zoning articles that we'll be doing yep. to affect that area. I think that one we discussed heavily last night was accessory dwelling units, and I think that will have some bearing on the beach area as well. And uh, we're going to be uh, updating our flood ordinances too. We're working on something that will be before the planning board for discussion next month. So I think those will be directly affiliated, and there may be others. So we'll keep you posted on zoning and any okay. others that I learn about otherwise. That would be great. Going back to the um, the two million dollars for the sewer, it would be nice to know, you know, with all these um, updated assessments, how much money is coming off of that beach. You know, there's a lot of new condos, a lot of new development, mm -hmm. and the improvements that have been happening in the last ten years. And I think it's good for the people uptown to understand you know, how much money the beach is kicking in. I think you know one of one of the things that, and, and this is somewhat related. Um, there were two major uh, water sewage projects um, that will be going in front of the uh, residents in Warren articles. One is the one we just talked about, and the other one is on uh, Lafayette Road, uh, where they need to do sewage um, uh, down on Lafayette Road. And so, I think these are going to be important. Um, Warren articles, um, and I know from the beach perspective, this one I think we should <clears throat> at least be in a supportive way unless we find something different. But I, I, I can't see see that. So um, we ought to support them both. I mean, we are the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Yeah, I know with um, the people that experience Hampton are strongly supporting this. You know, it's good for for the whole town. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the new business? I do have one item I just wanted Jason. to note. Um, we have uh, next Wednesday, the 28th of September, 6.30 to 8.30 um, at the police department training room. We have a flood preparation workshop that we're holding. This is related to our community rating system uh, grant that we've been working on. Uh, it's a public information workshop. It's an opportunity for people to learn about how their property may be affected by flooding. Um, we'll show attendees how to use the FEMA Map Service Center website to view valuable information about their property <laughs> and also field questions on our floodplain regulations. So it's really geared more toward people who are in a special flood hazard area, but those people are certainly encouraged to attend. Uh, we'll start with a brief presentation and then we'll have laptops set up where we can work with individuals and show them how they can go online themselves and learn about uh, their flood risks. Dates again, Chase? Uh, September 28th, next Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Police Department Training Room. Okay. One other that, that I'm just going to put on the agenda for next month, just to give everybody an FYI. Um, as you all know, Senator Stiles is retiring. Um, and um, over the years, uh, she has done an awful lot. Um, with this commission and with all of the improvements of Hampton Beach. So um, I'm going to be looking to recognize her and, 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 and thanking her for her service uh, as not only a state representative but a state senator uh, and a really good friend of this commission. So she'll be on the agenda uh, for October. Any other new business? I just want to mention the meeting for the Village District on the 
the, what did we say, the 9th of October? October 12th. October 12th, I'm sorry. Is not is going to be at 4.30, not 5.30. And uh, <coughs> this commission, you'll be uh, speaking as well as we will be uh, honoring Senator Stiles at that meeting as well. Okay. Good. Before we adjourn, Ed, did you just have one comment? Just one comment. I, I forgot one. It's up to adjourn. With, uh, the master plan, I think, has the, the uh, Hampton River Bridge being replaced by a four-lane bridge. There'd be no reason to build a four-lane bridge if uh, uh, Ocean Boulevard goes to one lane. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's something that people should keep in mind. Yep. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion made by Mr. Hausman to adjourn at uh, 7.55, 7.56, excuse me. Do I have a second? A second by Mr. Ladd, all in favor. <laughs> Channel 22, thank you very much. Right. Well, I wanted to work some more. You know, I, I would have stayed. I would have stayed.